This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We're now sitting in the Volvo C40. And today I'm going to do a battery capacity test. So this was something I should have done when I already did the range test. But so let me explain a little bit. When I do my range test, I will usually also measure the battery capacity by charging the car to 100%. And then driving it slowly down to 0%, maybe 1%, 2% with the 90 kilometers per hour test. By doing that, I will measure the battery capacity. And then I will use that number to estimate the 120 kilometers per hour test, which I don't do the full cycle. So it, it's simplified, but it's good enough. It, it might just be by a, a couple of percent off, which is no big deal. So if you're testing a car that has, let's say, 300 400 kilometers of range i might be missing it by only a few kilometers up to five kilometers so that works fine uh, so i don't have to waste too much time measuring everything but uh, nowadays when i test a, a new model well it's not a new model it's just a new variant of an existing model let's say this one the c40 uses the exact same battery as uh, pulsar 2 long range or the volvo xc40 then there's no really need to test the whole battery capacity. I've done it for a couple of cars. I think it was the ID3. Turns out that every time I test it, I get consistent result, uh, the same amount of kilowatt hour with a little bit of variations, of course, but very small my variation. We're talking about the watt hours here. Um, but I have indications that it could seem like this C40 might have uh, more battery capacity than before, but I'm not sure because based on a charging session, it looks, I mean, it, but based on a charging session, the charger delivered more kilowatt hour to the this battery versus the XC40 battery, but it could also be battery heated that was active in this session that was not active before. So that's why I'm not sure. So we're just gonna test it. I will show you guys the way, the way I'm thinking when we drive and all that. Um, uh, yeah, I guess now you guys are kind of bored, so let's just start driving and then we'll explain more during the drive. And we just finished charging 10 minutes ago, so the battery should be in the top state now and also we see 15 degrees Celsius in the garage. And yeah, there, there shouldn't be any discharging now right after uh, battery finished charging. So we're still plugged in, we're gonna unplug and then off we go. We are on the moon now, getting close to Klöfta. So the plan is that I will drive north now towards, uh, I don't know, maybe I just go to the same place I usually go to, uh, Rudsögda, and then drive a little bit back and forth and then go back to Arnabru. So uh, uh, I will check several things. One thing I will check is uh, how linear the uh, state of charge scale is. So. Um, uh, I've seen many many cars have not linear scale so we can check this one so we will do it by uh, checking now at uh, we can do it at 10% uh, sorry, at 90% 80% or whatever uh, or you don't have to be that uh, uh, frequent but just for fun I was going to check and see uh, how it goes so we have to wait for 90% first we're at 89% now. I forgot to check at 90%, but it's not too important anyway. Close enough. So um, based on a uh, checkpoint just right before I shot the video, I estimated that we have 82.2 kilowatt hour, but we have some significant roundoff error. So I guess we'll see. Oh, how is Mjösen today? Windsock is hanging. Wow, almost no wind. Perfect driving condition except for that it's two degrees Celsius outside. We're just past the Rudsögda, getting closer to Moval. So normally I don't drive this stretch. You see, we still have 110 kilometers per hour motorway, but um, towards Moval now, it will turn into 90 zone and then there'll be some intersection stuff. So that's why it's a bit longer turnaround point. So that's why I, in general, avoid it, but yeah. For now, we just do this because we're doing the 90 test. But okay, so you see right now we are down to 59% and then I did several checkpoints on the way here. And when we initially check it, it could seem like the battery is way bigger. But then as we go lower, then we get closer and closer to, I guess, the true value. But there is also a little bit of a runoff error on the way here. But at least it starts evening out. 
Uh, so right now it could seem like we will still get 72.6 kilowatt hour or something around there. Uh, now why was it so high in the beginning? Uh, I'm not sure, but again, it could be because the state of charge scale is not linear. Yeah, we'll find out by the end. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. I have to get ready now. So we are almost to the point where we have to turn around. Oh, it's actually, it's actually a 70 zone here. Ah, oh, yeah. So this is uh, one of the main reasons why I usually avoid this. So you have to slow down a bit here. Yeah, you don't want to go too fast there. Okay, okay. Uh, nothing to see, nothing to see. We are back in Oslo. I've been driving around circles uh, near Arnebu and uh, we now have turtle mode or tur tortoise mode. At 9% it occurred. So you see the arc there, that's the power limit. So we have around 60% power left. And the car feels a bit sluggish when I accelerate it. Ooh, yeah. So I just wonder how deep I want to go. Hmm. We'll see then. We are now at Circle K topping up a bit, but I finished the test uh, with 4% left. I didn't dare to go lower. The car was getting more and more sluggish to the point where it was almost undrivable. It was slower than a fossil car. But anyway, so based on the result here, it seems like we have 75.8 kilowatt hour. That is a lot more than we measured before. At least um, how is this? Oh, oh, three more kilowatt hour. Hmm. It could be that the software has been changed because this car is not that new. It has done almost 10,000 kilometers on the odometer. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what's up with this. But um, so right now we've seen it also during the pace here down to almost 0%. The, the kilowatt, I mean, the kilowatt hour number was fluctuating a little bit. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Could be measurement error, round of error, but I'm not sure about that one either. Okay, but okay. Anyway, now we have the result. What I want to do also is now to charge back to 100%. And then we do the high speed test because just for fun, since I have time left over with this Volvo, I want to see um, when we go on high speed and the load is higher how much are the losses and then how many kilowatt hour do we get then i've tried this with other cars also and in, in general german cars they tend to be really good and tesla and even at higher load you have not significant uh, losses but then uh, with other cars i measured as high as six to yeah i think it was six percent i'm not sure if i can trust my measurement but yeah we'll see now with this one then the volvo Good morning, it's 10 now. Next day I charge up the car to 100% again. And now we will redo the test, but at 120-ish kilometers per hour. You see, it's even warmer in the garage today. I heated up the garage ever since last night, or actually yesterday daytime. So it was 21 when I came in here. Now it's dropping a little bit because the door is open. And then hmm, it is actually pulling something from the wall box. Not sure what it is, but okay. But we should be at 100% now, so let's go then. We have been driving for a while now. We are at uh, Minnesung and let's check here. You see, we have somewhat strong crosswind today uh, from the south-ish. Yeah, wait, huh? Wait, what? The wind suck and uh, the waves on Mios doesn't correspond. Okay, that's, that's weird. But okay, anyway. Yeah, consumption right now is 291 watt hour per kilometer. We are driving at uh, speed limit plus VAT, and uh, this, at least this test, will be way faster than the 90 test. Oh man, I have to comment about the auto steer. It is not good. Uh, when we are driving at these speeds, it will do these micro adjustments left and right, left and right, left and right, constantly. It's driving like an insecure teenager. So you see, and especially in curves, and we also have a merge. Merges also tends to be a bit wacky, but uh, it depends. It's kind of random. Whoa, 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 see, whoa, 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 what the heck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shit, what the heck was that all about? Okay, okay, back, back on track. Oh, 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 I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, but it's doing the left and right jerky movement in curves, in a straight line, all the time. Um, 
and also uh, what it tends to do okay you hear the, the noise I'm, I'm not touching the steering wheel because I don't want to interfere with it what the car tends to do is that in left curve it will many times hug the middle here or if you go on if you just happen to stay on the, the left lane it will actually hug this one like this many many times like oh shit cringe and then when we take a right curve it tends to also hug the right side but it's random and it doesn't happen always on the same curve but also for the record I do have software 1.10, the latest software, but it still uh, bugs. People say, oh, with the latest software, it's going to be better. Well, uh, apparently not. It's uh, more or less the same as the Volvo XC40 I tried uh, over uh, yeah, almost two years ago. We're done with the test now. I had to block out the sun here, so it looks kind of weird. But anyway, yes, it actually improves acoustics a little bit because we have less echo. So we're now at uh, Mail Charger in uh, uh, Klöfta, yes, um, Burger King. But okay, so if you look at this result this time, you see that uh, during the discharge uh, session, we also had a bit of a fluctuating values in the beginning. And then towards the end, it seems to be more and more stable. And then it seems that the number will will be more accurate. Uh, that's also what happened in the 90 test. And this time we managed to get 75.2 kilowatt hour versus 75.8 with the slower test. This is what I've seen over and over and over again. And that is actually only 0.8% loss. So slightly less than 1% loss. Uh, or, or increase loss in the low speed versus high speed test. Very good, really. So this is on par with what I've seen in the German cars and also uh, Tesla. They have very little loss. And uh, can we trust these numbers? I believe so. I believe so. As long as you do like like a full test like this, uh, I think I had some uh, ideas that maybe the the uh, Volvo XC40 I tested was a bit wacky or had a higher loss. But then I didn't actually do a proper test like I did now. I measured a part of the battery, and you can already see on the result that if you only measure uh, a 60 percent span or even a 80 percent span, also depending on where you measure it from. On top or in the middle or whatever then you actually get incorrect uh, numbers so um, this actually uh, it means that uh, when we did the iPACE test maybe we need to you know, the other wireless I, wireless charging on the iPACE test we should actually do uh, we should charge to 100% and then discharge it or something we should measure the whole battery instead of just 20% but okay anyway so this is really good it means that or this indicates that the Volvo battery has low internal resistance and even at higher load it won't lose that much in terms of heat so yes interesting uh, I find it interesting uh, but normally nowadays I don't do this extensive test because uh, I've done some of it over and over again and then I found out that they uh, it's not necessary for most most cars I test with a different uh, version if it's a uh, all-wheel drive version rear wheel drive front wheel drive they still have the same battery and in general they don't change that often so this is more like an exception that uh, it seems like the Volvo engineers they open up more capacity on this battery so anyway I think that's gonna be it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later